Hello and welcome everyone to our latest presentation on Remdesivir plus standard of care versus standard of care alone for treatment of patients admitted with COVID-19 to hospitals. This is a phase 3 randomized controlled open level trial that is the discovery trial. This has been published last week in Lancet. So the first study that is the ACT-1 adaptive COVID-19 treatment trial which included 1062 patients showed that remdesivir is associated with shorter recovery that is 10 days versus 15 days with standard care but was not associated with a decrease in mortality. However, with this evidence an emergency use was authorized for remdesivir in all patients of COVID-19. The subsequent study the International Solidarity Consortium, which was sponsored by WHO, included 2,750 patients with on uh, remdesivir and found no benefit of remdesivir in terms of hospital mortality across various healthcare settings. So the objective of this particular study was to further document clinical outcomes, virological kinetics, treatment pharmacokinetics, and safety data and the preliminary analysis has been reported here between remdesivir and standard care group. So coming to the methods, it is a open level phase 3 adaptive design multicentric randomized controlled trial. It has been conducted in 48 sites in France, Belgium, Austria, Portugal and Luxembourg. The inclusion criteria were age more than 18 years patient who had a lab confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection if they presented with at least one of the followings that is they had some evidence of pneumonia that is rails or crackles on examination or saturation less than 94 on room air and they required uh, oxygen support in terms of supplemental oxygen or high flow or non-invasive or mechanical ventilation. The exclusion being elevated liver enzymes five times the upper lipid of the normal stage 4 severe chronic kidney disease or requiring dialysis transferred within 72 hours to another hospital that was not a study site pregnant or breastfeeding contraindication to any study medication including allergies treated with one of the evaluated antiviral drugs in the past 29 days or if they used Revivirin either in the past 29 days or concomitant to, to the random assignment group. Now the procedure. The patient received remdesivir which was administered intravenously with a loading dose of 200 mg on day 1 followed by 100 mg 1 hour infusion or daily for a duration of 10 days. Its cessation was allowed after 5 days if the patient was discharged from the hospital. Steroids and anticoagulants were added to the standard care on October 1st, 2020 by the protocol version 10 and the suggested steroid regimen was dexamethasone 6 mg OD for 10 days or until discharge. Other immunomodulators were allowed as per clinical discretion because at that time tocilizumab was not a part of the established treatment. Coming to the outcome, primary outcome measure was clinical status at day 15 as measured on 7 point ordinal scale of the WHO master protocol. Secondary outcomes being other clinical outcomes, the viral load and the safety of remdesivir in these patients. So if you can see, total 1308 patients were randomly assigned, 156 into the remdesivir group, 152 into the standard care group. This was when there was a simultaneous group evaluating lopinavir, ritonavir with lopinavir, ritonavir with interferon beta 1 and hydroxychloroquine. Subsequently, this whole group was found to be futile. So, all the patients subsequently were randomized into the remdesivir group. Overall, 414 patients were included in remdesivir, 418 in the control group. So, if you look at the baseline characteristics, the median age was around 64. Most of the patients were male, 70%, two-third. Again, two-third were white. Some coexisting disease was present in most of the patients. That is in almost two-third of the cases again. Coexisting abnormalities that is obesity was the most common followed by chronic cardiac disease and diabetes followed by chronic pulmonary diseases. The median day of symptoms to the randomization day was 9 days in both the groups. Severity was again 60% into the moderate group, severe was 39%. 
Now ventilatory support was similar, room air 1%, oxygen support 60%, high flow 18%, non-invasive 4%, ventilator 18% and ECMO just two patients who were present in the control group. The new screw that is the early warning system 2 scoring was same in all the groups. The 7 point ordinal scale was also identical. Scoring 4 was most common with 60% patients. The median viral load was 3.2 log copies of 1000 cells. Now biological data was similar in terms of lymphocyte count, the neutrophil count, platelets, urea, creatinine, liver enzymes, C-reactive proteins, D-dimers, ferritins. It was comparable in both the groups. If you look at the primary outcome, there was not much difference between the two groups. Even if we divide them in terms of moderate and severe, there was no difference. This was consistent at day 15 as well as day 29. The odds ratio was extremely similar, so there is no difference between remdesivir group and control group. Now, if you look at other parameters, they are too showing no much difference, even if we are dividing between moderate and severe. This is same in terms of taste to improvement, change in the baseline news too the hospital discharge rate, new ventilator rate, oxygen free rate, ventilator free rate, even death, all are similar. Now this is showing the change of the patients of the ordinal scale over on day 15 and day 29. As you can see, it is almost similar in between the two groups. There is not much difference. This is even if you divide them in terms of moderate and severe, even in severe patients or moderate patients, the outcomes are extremely similar in the two groups. This is also reflected in terms of the viral copies. So it's not as if when remdesivir was associated with any improvement in viral clearance. The viral clearance was also similar in the both groups. And this stayed in when if you looked in terms of moderate disease vis-a-vis -vis severe disease. So if you look at the adverse effect profile, this is similar between the two groups. So Remdesivir is not something which is associated with high adverse effects. So most of the so in most of the cases, remdesivir is quite safer drug. So to conclude, the use of remdesivir for treatment of hospitalized patients with COVID-19 was not associated with clinical improvement on day 15 or day 29, nor with the reduction in mortality, nor with the reduction even in the SARS-CoV-2 RNA. So overall, the use of remdesivir in COVID-19 is not at all of any benefit. So this is reflected in the latest guidelines that have been drawn from the WHO which recommends against using remdesivir in COVID-19. So after this study, in as far as our practice is concerned, we don't think there is any more need of using remdesivir for treatment of COVID-19. The fact that remdesivir is not showing any benefit is actually quite clearly established now and we should not be using any more remdesivir for the treatment of COVID-19 whether it is moderate severe patients or severe patients. Thank you for your patience and check our website for further information.